Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the quantity theory of money and the monetary equation of exchange. If you need a little more help after watching this video, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. So first we're going to go over what this quantity theory of money is. It can all be summed up by this quote from famous economist Milton Friedman. He said, Inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon in the sense that it is and can be produced only by a more rapid increase in the quantity of money than in output. What that quote means is that inflation occurs when the money supply increases quicker than the quantity of real output. And that means that deflation could occur when the money supply decreases or increases slower than the increase in real output. Now, of course, you probably already know that hyperinflation has happened in the past, and that has occurred because of rapid increases in the money supply within some countries. We saw that in Germany in October of 1923, they had over 29,000% month over month inflation. That kind of inflation destroyed the value of their money to where it was more valuable as toys for children than as actual currency. And perhaps the most infamous example of hyperinflation we've had was in Zimbabwe in 2008. Zimbabwe's year-over-year -year inflation rate was 89.7 sextillion percent. That is a huge amount of inflation, so much so that even this $100 trillion bill became worthless. Their currency collapsed. And today, in Zimbabwe, they use United States dollars as their currency as a result. So we have a mathematical formula for the monetary equation of exchange, and here are the variables. First of all, we have the letter M. That is the M1 money supply. It's the total amount of money within an economy. The next variable is the letter V. That's the velocity of money, and that's the number of times a dollar is spent on average within an economy. The third variable is the price level, and that could be measured by the CPI or the GDP deflator. And the fourth variable is the letter Y. That is real output or real GDP also called national income. Take all those variables together and it gives us our formula MV equals PY. Both sides of this equation equal nominal GDP. Of course, you've already seen the PY side of the equation on your ASAD model. The x-axis is of course the real output and the y-axis is your price level. Multiply both of those together and that gives us nominal GDP. To help us understand this formula a little bit better, we're going to assume that there's an economy with just one dollar in circulation. That's the money supply, one dollar. And one citizen has that dollar. They exchange that dollar for a candy bar, and then the person who has the dollar now will exchange that dollar for a cookie. Next, we're going to see this dollar exchanged for a soda, and finally, it's going to be exchanged for a donut. Now, that dollar has been rippling through that economy, and we have seen four transactions with that single dollar buying four different goods and services. Let's see how we can plug in the transactions we've seen within this fictitious economy into the quantity theory of money formula. So within this economy, the money supply is just one dollar, and we have seen that dollar spent four different times. The Price level here is $1 because every single one of these goods just costs $1. And finally, real output is those four items we've seen that were exchanged. The donut, the soda, the cookie, and the candy bar. If we plug those numbers into the formula, we can see that the MV will in fact equal the PY, both of them equaling $4 worth of nominal GDP. Now let's look at some implications that we have from this formula. If we assume, as monetarists often do, that the velocity of money is stable and real output is also stable in the short run, we will see that if we double the money supply from $1 to $2, nominal GDP must increase up to $8. And the only way this formula can hold true is if the price level also increases to $2. So when the money supply doubles, prices must also double if we assume the velocity of money is stable along with real output. 
And we can see the implication of this increase in the money supply, not changing real GDP, but rather only causing an increase in the price level if we apply it to the ASAD model. Here we have an economy that is currently at long run equilibrium. And as you already know, an increase in the money supply will drive interest rates down that will increase gross investment, shifting the aggregate demand curve to the right. That rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve will increase the price level and in the short run, increase real output. But now we have an inflationary gap. And as a result, workers are going to seek and get higher wages. Those higher wages and other input costs are going to shift the short run aggregate supply curve to the left in the long run, restoring long run equilibrium. Now we have a higher price level, but in the long run, real output did not change. YF and Y2 are equal in the long run. The increase in the money supply increased price levels, but did not change real output in the long run. So one criticism of the quantity theory of money is regarding the stability of the velocity of money. Here is a chart from the St. Louis Federal Reserve showing the velocity of the M1 money supply. And while it may remain stable in the short run, it hasn't always remained stable in the long run. But even if you believe that the velocity of money is not stable, the equation still holds. MV must equal PY. By definition, this equation is true. And if we assume that the velocity of money is stable and we want to keep prices stable as well, if there was a doubling of the real output from four to eight, then that will require, in this example, a doubling of the money supply as well. And so that means that if we want to keep prices stable when there's a stable velocity of money, then an increase in real output will require an increase in the money supply as well. So that's it. That is the quantity theory of money. It's not too tricky, but you might want to practice a little bit with the formula. If you're ready to practice it, head over to reviewecon.com and check out the quantity theory of money game. And if you still need help after that, make sure you pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. That's it for now. I'll see you next time.